Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for the video. This is my really good friend, Ben McCandless. And yeah, we're gonna be talking about a couple of things about his new book um, and uh, just kind of exploring the uh, various um, ideas that surround, uh, you know, disability awareness or, um, <laughs> fuck, we even got into COVID. So whatever the case is, I um, hope you enjoy this and um, I wanna be doing more podcasts. So if you like, if you like what I'm doing, give it a thumbs up. Um, and leave a comment below and make sure to check out his book in the description. Okay. All right, let's get into it. Three, two, one. Okay. Um, well shit. I'm glad we could do this, man. Um, how's, uh, how's your wife doing? She's doing all right. She's, uh, she has chosen to maintain the, uh, her absence in the other room. She may leave at some point, but that's all right. She's got to go run some errands. Okay. When does she go back to work? that i don't know um quarantine her, shit. yeah her her best friend who she was hanging out with the day that they were exposed uh she came she, she came up positive for for covid so. ah shit yeah so <laughs> yeah getting around all that that's gonna uh, be but she's going when she leaves today to run her out while she's out running errands she's gonna go and and get tested so okay shoot man well um, well, I mean, I hate to suddenly bring the fire with, um, what we're doing today, but the book, dude, um, I just finished, um, I just finished reading the last book that I was, uh, focusing on. I was, I was reading ghost in the wires by Kevin Mitnick and I personally nice. suck with having to read more than one book at the same time. So I've waited up until this point today to actually, uh, read your book and i wanted to oh, okay. i wanted to get your perspective um uh, ultimately um what, what the title of the book and then um you know just give a synopsis what is what is this book about so uh the title is sort of dreams um just to give you a little bit of background uh i started writing you know just dabbling in 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 uh in like poetry and things like that when i was in high school uh, but, uh, coming out of high school, I, you know, always felt drawn, uh, to writing and I've been told that I'm extremely creative, uh, when it comes to anything really, sure. um, yeah. <clears throat> um, which shows with my meads and vinegars and barbecue sauces and things like that. But, um, just coming up with ideas to, to do stuff. Okay. That you would need, you know, creativity for, you know, just some kind of imagination. Well, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the outlet. Right, right. So, uh, plus, uh, with everything with, you know, losing my sight growing up as a teenager, I needed something like that. I needed to, to be able to write my feelings and my emotions down. And that was, that was a great way to do that. Right. Um, did so, you, did you write, like, did you have a journal as a kid or, you know, like a, some like a brailler, like a fucking Perkins that you had in your room. And like when you woke up at two in the morning after some crazy ass nightmare and you're like, I got to write about that. Did you do shit like that? No, no, actually I didn't. Um, because I shared a room with my older brother. I wouldn't have been able to punch away at a Perkins brailler. <laughs> You'd be punching <laughs> him. <laughs> he, 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 he'd be punching me. <laughs> so. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, so no, I I, uh, I didn't have any, but I did have a Braille and speak. Um, oh man, you remember uh, like those a, things? Oh Damn. my gosh, yeah. Old the first school. one I had was the uh, the Braille and speak six forty. Okay. Um, uh, there was a group of of women that got together, like down in Florida. Um, they 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 basically they're rich old women had nothing to do with their <laughs> money and stuff, so they they like took on like charity, you know, charity cases and stuff. Yeah. And somehow my parents, uh, got in touch with these, these ladies and, okay. you know, they, they saw me as a charity case. So they went out and they bought me a Braille and speak and invited me to one of their little, uh, luncheons and stuff and presented it to me and all this stuff. And I was just like, Oh, sweet. Cool. Something I can write on that. Like, yeah, I don't dude. have to worry. You right. know, I don't have to worry about somebody sneaking in there and trying to read what I'm writing and, oh, and dude, that kind we, of stuff. We're in the know, dark because... with that shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, no pun intended, eh? Yes. So, uh, uh, so um, you know, with with having that device, I guess, like when when did you make the decision that you wanted to write a book? It wasn't until actually uh, later, later in life, like around 19, 20 years old, uh, okay. after I met my wife, actually, um, I s- came up with this idea for this book. It was called My Evil Twin. And uh, I really wanted to write this book. Um, and it was weird. Like, I was first time I started writing it, I wasn't even writing it on my Braille and speak. I had retired that thing to the side you know pushed it oh, aside because yeah. i had a desktop computer right so i was like oh you know i'll write it on my desktop well i got like 19 chapters in and the computer ate my book dude I you're fucking find kidding anywhere. me man. no no i'm not so like it was insane completely gone completely gone like i i tried bringing it up in my uh recycle folder you know, the recycle bin and it was God. just, it wasn't even in there. It was, just I'd be so gone. pissed, dude. I'd chuck uh, the thing out the window. I was pissed. And then I found <laughs> out like <laughs> I went to go take, I took it into a computer shop. Okay. And the, the guy at the computer shop said, you know, called me up and he's like, dude, this thing is blue screen and I can't do anything. And I was like, what? There was nothing wrong with it. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, there's nothing. It's, it's garbage. It, it was a rebuilt, old social security office computer uh refurbished and and whatnot and he's like they we don't even make the motherboard for this computer anymore okay like i was like he's like it's fried and i was like oh man what am i gonna do so i i got out the old braille and speak and i started using that and again like literally no i'm not even joking got like 19 20 chapters in and the braille and speak died and i was like all right i'm gonna send this back to freedom scientific you know and find out what's going on. So I sent it out and they were like, Oh, well your battery was leaking. What do you mean? It was leaking. It's a lithium battery. Them things ain't supposed to leak. Like what, what do you mean? It's leak. He's Oh, the, it was leaking. And like all this stuff is fried. We have to wipe it and we'll put a new battery in it. We'll send it back. I'm like, Oh my God, maybe I'm just not meant to write. <laughs> so, so that's where I was. At. It's a like, sign I, from God. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was like, you know, twice, Twice I tried, twice it was garbage. It didn't work out. So I'll find something else. So, okay. you know, I mean, I had already done massage school and, and things like that um, to become a massage therapist. So I jumped back into that. I went back to a different school because I couldn't pass my state boards. And uh, so I, I, I went to a different school and graduated and took my state boards and passed first time out. I was like, all right, cool. Now I can get a job. Well, I lived in South Florida where on every corner there's a new, there's a different spa. And, you know, I'm saying it was like so hard to find a job. And I was, you've already got that competition. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm kind of new and I'm out of school and like, you know, not, there's not a lot of places down there that take newbies, you know, they want somebody with experience. So, um, my wife and I moved a little bit further North and I was able to find a job and stuff. And, uh, my aunt gave me, her laptop so i was like oh i got this cool laptop brand spanking new hp laptop i just want to say i can't stand hp uh after using that laptop for like several years i was like no i yeah I, right i hate i hate hewlett packard so like i won't even i won't even buy a buy a hewlett packard for my worst enemy no i i just won't um but it got me, got me interested in writing again. So I was like, well, I'm not writing that other book. I'm going to try something different. So I came up with this this idea. Time, timeline wise. I want to say, I was, it was after my wife and I had gotten married. Okay. And that was in 2000 or 2001. I can't, Uh, she's going to kill you if you can't remember that day, man. Well, it was, uh, yeah, no, actually she can't even remember the day. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, we were, as a matter of fact, it's funny. We were sitting there, uh, this year we were sitting down, we were doing Legos cause I do Lego projects. It's, yeah, man. So, All right. So we were I sitting see you. down, we were sitting yeah. down doing Legos and it was on our anniversary and she sits back and she was like, huh? And I was like, uh, what? And she was like, I thought maybe she, she couldn't figure out a certain Lego where a certain Lego was supposed to go. And she goes, oh, by the way, happy anniversary. And I was like, 
<laughs> like, do you pretend to be like, oh, honey, I, I, absolutely, yeah, it yeah. is our anniversary, yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I don't even. Love you too, uh, sweetheart. You know? <laughs> uh, like, you know, it totally caught me off guard. I was just like, oh, yeah, it is today, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, my gosh, I thought it was yesterday. Or maybe that's such, not such a good idea saying that. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, she was like, man, boy, aren't we a pair just sitting here? We don't even realize it's our anniversary. And I was like, well, you know, but. Um, well, I guess in a certain sense, too, like, I, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just a perspective of mine. But dates are just dates. You know, the more important facet of it is that you have something that's sealed and, and promised, you know, something that you're right, that you're you know, you have a common goal. Yeah. Yeah. We've accomplished together. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, it was, it was, it was about, it was probably about a year after we had gotten married. So I want to say 2002 rough, okay. rough guesstimate. Um, so I was sitting down and I was thinking about, okay, what am I going to write? And I came up with this crazy idea of writing this five book um, series and called the portal walker, the portal walker series okay. and that's what book one sort of dreams it is book one in that series and i tell you what it took me it took me about eight years to sit down and actually write the book it's time um, and effort man right there I yeah it's that. just like 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 so much time and and energies and just you know going back and you know kind of revising each each chapter and and even today like i've read through my book several times and and i've listened to the audio uh that jeff harding put together for me and i'm like this writing is shit dude it's <laughs> terrible <laughs> it really is like the story <laughs> the story oh, man. is 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 well thought out you know the characters and everything is just very uh very well done and and whatnot but like even going into like character backgrounds and stuff, I'm like, this is trash. I can't believe I actually <laughs> published this, like, and put it on the market, like, for people to read. Why would I do that? But every every author second guesses themselves. Oh, dude, you know? and every artist does too, man. I mean, uh, me as a musician, I'm four albums in right now, and I, I I listen back to my first record, Father Forgive Me, which I published in 2016, and you know, yeah. I love the songs. They're hard hitting. They're you know they're they're rocking. But as a producer too, I listen to some of the shit that I did just to make it sound good. I'm like, why did you do that with the drums? What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, this <laughs> sounds decent, but the, first of all, you're out of tune here. What what what? You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's just that initial adolescence, man. You know that excitement to pop the cherry of creativity. Uh, you know, and right. I, I think I think it's a good thing that we get that not i wouldn't call it regret but that feeling of uh you know oh my god what was i thinking because yeah that just you know sets the stove in in the temperature for you know a better meal a better uh, a, a better temperature for what's to come next you know what right I mean? right so uh <laughs> so what i'm doing uh and, and i'll get into a, a little synopsis about about the, the the book, but what I want to do with book two, um, I've already, I've already written the entire book, but I'm right. going through. So I'm, so I've done my first draft, and what I normally don't do is I I'm not a writer who who writes like two three four drafts and then was, is like okay here's the final cut. No, I like to I like to pick my chapters apart. So I'll write a chapter, I'll pick it apart and then rewrite that chapter and that's then smart. that's it done okay it's done it's put aside i'm done with chapter one right and then i do the same thing with chapter two but like I, I you know i wrote book two like right after i published uh book one i wrote book two and i was just like i just jumped right into it and just went right in balls in just all ready to rock and roll you know um and I, although i do like book two there's a I was in a very, very deep, dark depression uh, when I wrote book two. Okay. Uh, so, so there's some a lot of darkness in that book that I just I, personally, um, 
you know, I understand that, hey, maybe having that darkness in there will help others to find the light, but, um, but it's just too dark for me. I have to take some of that out and, you know, just, just make it a little bit more enjoyable. I mean, I, not that I'm going to take all the darkness out because book two <clears throat> is called Acts of Chaos and it's about a battle axe that it, when it, when, when the, when the user, when the, when the wielder uses the battle axe to fight demons, it actually absorbs the energy and the life force of that demon. Right. Um, so it's sure. a demon slayer. Um, okay. and, and, and it actually transfers that energy and that, and that life force into the wielder. Um, and, and that includes like memories and, and so you're you big know, into fantasy, that oh, dragon yes, shit, you know, Absolutely. flames, yes. the knights yep. and all that dude. Um, not so much knights, you know I mean? There, there are, uh, in like in book one, in, in sort of dreams, uh, the, you know, when, when, so, so the, so the synopsis, well, right. I said, I'd get to that. So the synopsis yeah. is, is this, so there's, in our world, in the in the world of uh, of planet Earth, yeah, um, there's a man with his wife and his daughter. They live in South Florida. Uh, the guy he he trains in martial arts. He's got like rank, you know black belt ranks and like different uh, disciplines, different mm, martial like arts you. disciplines. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But his name is Jax. Mine yeah. is not. <laughs> so so yeah. So he. Uh, his wife goes out and she buys him this sword from this little old man at a flea market. And like when she turns her back, you know, she turns back around and the little old man is just gone. He's vanished. Um, so, so she takes this sword and she, you know, she packages it up and wraps it up and gives it to him as a gift for passing some of his martial arts testing for his next rank and stuff. Okay. So um, he gets his sword and it's a broad sword and it is the sword of dreams and uh, it describes the blade in the book. But just to give you a little bit of a description, the, the blade is kind of like uh, the edge of the blade. It's double edged sword, like broad swords should be. Um, and it's wavy all along the length of the edge of the okay. blade to where it comes to a point. So almost, Almost not not quite as sharp of a of a waves of waves to make it look like flames, but sure. but know, it has that engraving, of, like that kind of insignia to to signify the 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 constants of waves and and flame kind yeah, of it's, yeah it's like right, a right. kind of ideology there. Almost kind of like if you picture what a like a ceremonial dagger blade would look like. Okay, kind of just wavy all down the blade until it comes to the point. So does the sword, does the sword kind of have like a major facet in the book? Does that hold a lot yes. of symbolism so the, then? Um, sort of. So the sword uh, gains power, absorbs energy okay. through the wielder's dreams. Okay. Ooh, I like some Inception shit. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, so it, it pulls at his, like, at the, like his, almost kind of like his, his chi, his life force, but it doesn't okay. drain him um, to the, to the point where like he feels exhausted or, or, or anything like he doesn't feel anything when this sword pulls at his, his chi energy. Okay. Um. So, but it, it, what it does is because it, as it gains power, the blade itself is sentient. So it develops a telepathic relationship with Jax. I the, like the main that character, almost like a duplicate, uh, like manifest, right? In a sense, like 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 the sword is there's a <laughs> like a trapped being inside the sword, like it has its own life energy. Okay, um, and then it portrays this voice uh, to to let you know through telepathy uh, to Jax as the wielder. Okay. And when it gains enough of that energy, it's able to open a portal to anywhere, to anywhere. It could go anywhere. It, it, the wielder, anywhere the wielder wants it to go. Okay. So, uh, but in this case, <laughs> this sword, there is turmoil and strife going on on the planet where the sword was actually forged. 
Okay. So the, the sword itself was forged by a wizard with the flames of a dragon in, in the, like the depths of this like mountain, um, you know, in the, in the layer of the dragon, basically sure. like in the, you know, down inside this mountain and stuff. Um, so using the magics, both from the, the dragon, the wizard, you know, and forcing those magics into the blade creates this sentient being that lives inside the blade. <laughs> That's so dope. It okay. is. So, so yeah. So the sword conveys this, you know, this threat to Jax and like he's the, the sword tells him if you, if you do what I ask and go to this, this world um, and help the people of this world, I, I will fulfill your dreams. Okay. And so Jax being blind, um, his number one first for first and fourth, uh, foremost, his biggest dream is to be able to see so he can look into his wife's eyes. Right. Right. Um, and that's powerful. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so he uses this sword in his kata in his own personal gym that, that he has on his property, uh, where he trains and stuff. And the sword opens this portal and he steps through and he goes to the world of Feluria, which is the world where the sword was forged. And immediately, like as soon as he walks, you know, steps through this portal, um, he can see, but it doesn't really dawn on him. Like, Oh my gosh, I can see like it, it like, because instantly he hears screams around the corner, like people screaming and yelling and stuff. So he takes off around the corner and he sees this like huge, like creature attacking these people. And so he, you know, with his martial arts skills and stuff, he goes up and he kills this. It's a demon and he kills this demon. And um, so it's a, it's a gunk uh, Okay, is a, the, the name of the demon. So this, he kills this demon and the people of the, the village where he ends up like, you know, the, the, the guy, the innkeeper, he comes over and he's like, you'll stay in my inn. And, and Jack's he's sitting on the side of the, the side of the road. And he's just like trying to take it all in. Like, he's just like in shock almost, you know, but trying to be, uh, you know, intelligent enough to be like, you know, okay, I can't show these people that I'm in shock. You know, I, I have to, I have to act and, and right. react right. the way the they sense would. of leadership, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and that's actually part of being a black belt in any martial art is is leadership. You know, being able to teach and be be a leader and and be the one in command and and those kinds of things. So sure. So the so he realizes that the innkeeper is actually speaking a different language, but he understands it. Okay. Like the sword has given him all this stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he can speak it as well. So he, you know, he stays at the, the, the innkeepers in, uh, that night and, you know, through the blade, he discovers that the, the world, there's a prince who has gone into the, the, the five realms, um, and the spiritual realms. And he has taken over the, the, the realm of the mind. And he, he, he has ra he's raising a demon horde to kind of take over the, the world. Yeah. You know, so he's a tyrant. Um, so, so Jax's job throughout the book is to, he's on a journey from one side of this world to the other side of the world, to the spiritual realms, to fight this prince, um, to, to stop him from tyranny and oppression. Okay. So um, without telling too much of the synopsis, because uh, right. I'm intrigued already, um, really quick, just uh, for the sense of the podcast, um, the book is on Amazon for paperback as well as Kindle. Uh, yes, for, it is. Yep. It, it is both paperback. Paperback is uh, POD, so it's print on demand. Uh, that means they don't print up a hundred copies and then try to sell a hundred copies. You order it, they print it, they ship it. Um, it is also available for Kindle. 
although I'm having some little bit of trouble with Kindle right now for some reason, because when I first published the book, I did it through CreateSpace. Right. And like I paid for a specific package bundle, you know, plan. Yeah. Uh, and part of that plan was to make it available with Kindle as well as in print. Well, CreateSpace about a year ago, they merged with KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing. And when they did, for some reason, um, my book became unavailable with Kindle. So I have to contact them somehow because they don't have telephones. You know, I guess I have to do it through email or or on their website. But it always bothers me why they do why companies do do that. You know, not yeah, to shine. I want to talk to somebody. I want to fucking talk to somebody. Yeah, and, absolutely. And frankly, we're in COVID. Okay, you can work from home for God's sakes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and we <laughs> should I mean? we should have that option regardless. You know for what I'm saying? I know. Yeah. So I. I that kind of pisses me off, but you know, going, sure. I, I, I just have to go in there and figure out like, okay, I paid for that plan. Um, and you've taken that part away from me. And I, right. I, I, I demand, right. I, I demand to know why, right. because I've had several people want to go in and purchase it for their Kindles and they can't. Right. And like, that's, that's money lost to me. You know what I'm saying? That's sure. my royalties. So, so, I mean, on another on another side of that, uh, you know, mentioning that you had Jeff Harding actually record you an audiobook, which still when you told me about that, I was I was just wow. Now, that's that's a privilege. Where can yeah, that be accessed, if anywhere? Right um, now? Nowhere except for me personally. I, I you know, I mean, I can um, like I could post a Dropbox link or, or something like that. Uh, that's not a problem. Okay, well, then if you're comfortable, here. yeah, well, yeah. I tell you what we can do is when I publish this um, after we're done, uh, I'll put it on YouTube um, and I'll put a link in the description if you don't mind. And then no, if anybody wants Absolutely. to donate um, to the project as an audiobook for Ben, um, we'll, we'll put your PayPal email address in there too. Okay. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I still have to buy your moonshine, but you you make your own moonshine, man. I Well, okay, so I don't have a still, so it's not like yet. pure. Yeah, 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 there is a yet in there. <clears throat> uh, I do want to get one. I do want to get, and it is legal in the state of Pennsylvania. So, but yeah, I do want to get a, a still and, and make make the actual moonshine part. But currently, I just use Everclear. Uh, um, now I used to get the 196 proof, which made my apple pie moonshine <laughs> extremely strong. Oh my and God. like, like you would get hammered off of one pint, like no joke. I mean, my, and like, if you're not a big drinker, like my wife, she is not a big drinker. Sure. Uh, she drank probably four ounces and she got a buzz. She caught the buzz <laughs> off of four ounces, like of of my apple pie. That's the glory shot. about being a lightweight man. We're cheap. Yeah, up. that's it. Absolutely. <laughs> so so yeah. So uh, but yeah, I, I make apple pie moonshine. Uh, recently, I made a pumpkin spice moonshine, and then two days ago, I found a half a gallon of salted caramel cider, and I'm gonna make a caramel apple moonshine oh man sign me up for two there you go yeah um yeah well so, so i mean aside from it being um, marvelous that you have the hobby brother like i guess if i were to ask you know as somebody else who's totally blind just like yourself and who's been around the block once or twice with um you know adapting and um you know making changes to our habits or finding different ways to uh incorporate these activities for those who are you know ignorant to the thought you know as as a blind person i mean i i can understand it myself but if you were to explain this to somebody else who's never been in a pair of shoes in our aisle before what how would you describe making moonshine as a blind person um the, with the way i make it i, I actually got the the recipe from my from my uncle uh he's a he he makes wine and champagne and and things like that so one year he found this recipe to to make apple pie moonshine so it's super super easy honestly and okay. i really don't mind 
you know, sharing, you know, how it's done. Um, I, you know, I teach people all the time. I taught my best friend who is blind, uh, how to make it at home, but he's just lazy. He's like, dude, I'd rather pay you to make it than make it myself. <laughs> so, is it, is it the person that I'm thinking about? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay. My, buddy, my, my, my best friend, Scott, I've known him for like uh, almost 30 years. Okay. So, so yeah. We love you, so, Michael. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not Michael, but although he did say the same thing. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, Oh, uh, so basically you take, uh, you take a half gallon, uh, 64 ounce bottle of apple cider and, um, you use whatever brand you want to use. Uh, and then you, a half a gallon, also 64 ounce bottle of apple juice. Now I prefer juicy juice. Sure. I think it has I, a much I better too. flavor than, than Mott's. Although recently I have been using, uh, what is this Walmart's brand, the great value. Um, and Sounds I think, like I think it's very similar to the juicy juice. It has that real thick kind of flavor to it. So I really like that. Um, so you pour both of those into a pot on the stove, uh, like a, like a one gallon, maybe a four, four or five quart saucepan. Okay. Um, add eight cinnamon sticks, um, you know, more or less, depending on how, you know, cinnamon you, you want your, your, your apple pie moonshine, you know? Um, probably a tablespoon and a half of whole clove buds sure, and a handful, uh, of cardamom pods. That is my recipe. That is what I use. And it seems to, now when I got the recipe, it was just the apple juice, the apple cider and cinnamon sticks. Sure. Since then I have added the cloves. I have added cardamom pods and actually I want to get some fresh nutmeg and cut nutmeg root up and add nutmeg root to it. Oh, now you're talking. Um, yeah. So I really <laughs> like to add that to it, but for now, that's what I do. Um, you, you bring it to where it's just starting to boil and you drop the heat down and let it simmer for two hours. Okay. Um, at the end of that two hours, you turn your burner off, leave it, sit there. You can cover it if you want. I don't cover it because it causes, condensation on the lid and that water will drip down into your your mixture right. and, and that kind of water a, it down a toxin well not a toxin but it could be a contaminator yeah yeah in well you want it yeah you want it to kind of be you don't want it watered down you want as much flavor in there as possible so right. i typically i don't use a lid okay. um so i just let it sit there for about two hours you want you want to get it down to where when you touch the pan the outside of the pan it's not hot so it's co completely cooled down because if you add your alcohol to it while it's like, while there's steam coming out of it, you know, and while it's super hot, yeah. then you're, you're just cooking the alcohol out. Right. And that'll so kill you want, it. Right. That'll kill it. Totally kill it. Um, so I put my alcohol in my gallon size pitcher um, and then I pour the, um, the, the, you know, the, the apple mixture, I pour that through a strainer, um, uh, because you don't want all those, you know, the, the pods and the, and the clove buds and stuff. You don't want all that stuff in the actual, the finished product. Right. So I, 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 I pour it through a strainer into the, the gallon jug over the alcohol, because as you're pouring it in, it's literally mixing itself, but I still put a spoon in there and stir it. Um, give it a good stir and that's it, man. Just put it in the fridge um, or, or pour your jars. If you're going to do jars, uh, I personally, I do jars and occasionally like if somebody wants a half gallon, I'll pour a whole half gallon, do like a little half gallon milk carton kind of thing. Cause I, I order those by, you know, so they're sealed anyways. You know, when I put the cap on there, it's totally sealed. So, um, and you, and so, I mean, right now, as I understand it, you know, from, from what we've talked about before though, like, so you don't necessarily market it right now. You distribute more so to friends and family. I do. Yeah. And you know, I can't rightly say that I sell it either because, uh, I don't have a, a, a an alcohol license to sell. Right. So, so it's kind of off I the just, cuff. It's just, I do yeah, it for donations, fun. Yeah. Donate, I donations. take donations, you know, you know, stuff like that. So what so, we got to do to and, be on the safe know, side. Ten, $10 a pint, that's, you know, seems reasonable. I think There's it's reasonable too. If, 
Yeah. There's places I've, you know, gone through like down in Georgia that do like peach moonshine and stuff. And they're selling that stuff for like $25, $30 a pint. So, yeah. um, and eventually I, I want, I want to be able to make peach moonshine and peach hard ciders and, and things like that. Um, but you know, I mean, that's going to take some time. I'm going to re- uh, eventually look into licensing for, for, for alcohol and, and stuff like that. And, and then put up a website where people can go and order. I think it would be really fun, man. I mean, it's more so just building that inventory, building that, uh, you know, infrastructure for what it is that you're putting together. And, you know, alcohol is it's such a crass, like crassly viewed perspective at times, depending on the market. But but the good, you know, it's the tender care, like you explaining how you made it. And of itself yeah. shows the passion. It's not like you're some, you know, uh, redneck and out in the yeah, you know, butt fuck nowhere of Pennsylvania. <laughs> like I'm gonna sell my moonshine with my Everclear, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. You know no, what I that, mean? That ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> you you know you got all scientific on this, which which yeah, is absolutely. the and and that's just I think that's the big selling that's, point. That, that goes back to the whole you know creativity. You know, being able to right. Know, uh, use my creativity for, for something, you know, that benefits others. Right. Um, well, and, and it's like, this is the perfect time of year for that pumpkin spice stuff, man. And, uh, oh, yeah. apple pie and all that, you know, Thanksgiving being around the corner and Christmas, like yep. if you can get something ready with nutmeg for Christmas, shit, I'll buy a whole thing of it for my family. Cause we are Italian and we like to drink. <laughs> yes. Amen to that brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Uh, but Thanksgiving is around the corner. You guys doing anything? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Um, you know, my, everybody was talking about, my sister was talking about coming up from South Carolina. My younger brother was talking about coming down from New Hampshire and, you know, and now with the whole COVID thing, I don't think anybody's traveling. Oh my fucking gosh. It's ruining yeah. everything, man. I mean, I know it it's is. a redundant conversation, but I'm really sick of the C word. I'm ready for that stuff to be done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, uh, it's my personal opinion that people, have taken this and and, and honestly it, it's a, it's a scare tactic brought up by our media you know i think so um, too i mean if, it, if you like shifting gears into that dude like i've always okay so i caught covid about three weeks ago right. and it sucked i'm not gonna yeah. lie i was yeah. exhausted the whole time i lost sleep i ended up fucking my sleep schedule up to the point where I was waking up at two in the morning and going to bed at 5 PM, you know, that whole, whole nine yards. But, you know, looking at the evidence and data that is, you know, here, I I don't think it's as bad as it's being put out to be, you know, people Uh, are treating it like it's bubonic plague and it's right, right, right. And go ahead. It's really no worse than the common flu. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, I get it. I mean, I'll digress, you know, without sounding like some arrogant millennial. There are people who are suffering from this. And, you know, I my heart goes to them. Um, yeah. it, it really does. You know, people don't deserve to die um, from something like this. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at the numbers and, you know, somebody might call me cynical for this, but I'm only looking from a more broader macro perspective. Right. Uh, thousands of people versus millions, you know, right. There's only been maybe a little over a million people that have caught this thing out of the 8 billion people that are on this planet. Right. That's a small yep. number. It is a small number. It's a very small Absolutely. number. I'm very minuscule. school. I, I don't um, know, man. Uh, <clears throat> got my tests, you know, and it was gone within a week and a half. And, you know, uh, I don't know, brother, you know, part of me feels like I don't have too much of a, a, sw- um, a you know, a ball to throw in this ballpark. But at the same time, uh, I just I want people to calm down and be unified again, uh, you know, and, and get together, you know, wear your mask, you know, do the right thing. Uh, quarantine is necessary, you know, be be conscientious of others, but don't I feel like it's manifested itself. Yeah, Socially. absolutely. So, but here, and, and here's the thing, honestly, uh, and, and this, this is me coming from a person who has had, um, some bit of medical training as a massage therapist. Cause I got my massage therapy certification and license down in Florida where massage therapy is actually part of Florida's medical board. 
So that's where I got my training. So they, they touch more on, you know, the anatomy and physiology and even pathology. Um, so I, I learned about flus and colds and viruses and, you know, bacterial infections and, and even deeper into that, into like, you know, bone diseases and muscle fatigue and like all these different things. So like, I understand the human body. Right. Right. So as a massage therapist, though, over the last 20 something years that I've been practicing, um, in my experience, a virus needs a warm, dry place to grow and fester. Right. Right. So if you hydrate your body, if you drink lots of water, uh, hydrate your body. Now, water tends to cool the body as well. So you're get, you're you're denying that warm, dry place for that virus for for that virus to to you know get its footing. Um, as it were. And that, that in and of itself is a great preventative for, for COVID. Um, the other thing about the other side of it is your immune system. If you boost your immune system, do things that are going to jack your immune system up and and yeah, exactly. Exercise, you know, get out and get some freaking sun. Right. Get some uh, sun, vitamin C. And it's crazy because immune system. And right. you can get that from your from your diet, you know. Eat right some there, you go. Or That's some, it. You know, drink a j- glass of orange juice. It's every not morning, even rocket you know, science. That's what blows my mind. You know, pardon, uh, yeah. pardon us for maybe sounding, you know, a little uh, centric on this. <laughs> you know, but it, it's 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 rocket science. Drink some cranberry juice. Um, get that vitamin C, as Ben was saying. Like we're at a point where we're forgetting how to ride a bike. That's it. Yeah. We're forgetting how to ride our bike. Well, the thing is, is we're listening, you know, most of the population are listening to the media and and what is the media known for? You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, (laughs) they're known for taking a situation (laughs) and, and twisting it all up to make it sound good to the public. Right. And it's a business it's making money, you know, and that's, that's not rocket science either. If you look at the basics of economics and how a business is put together, they have to please an audience. They have to please uh, the higher ups, the people that give them the money, the people that give those guys the money, Uh, you know, and uh, I can't believe we're getting into this conversation. This is good. Oh, that's all right. Like, uh, no, it's great. Uh, like it, it bothers me to, to death, how it's all about a ratings agenda, you know, and, and there's no transparency to, Oh, how do I really feel? Oh, I lost my job because I expressed my opinion. Well, clearly this is not, you know, no, no one's authentic here. You know, there's no authenticity. Right. And, And, you know, like I, in the very beginning and in, in the very, very beginning of like all the whole pandemic COVID-19 scare. Yeah. Uh, I posted a post on Facebook because everybody was talking about, Oh, the experts, the experts are saying where toilet masks paper, and, brother. Toilet yeah. Paper. Toilet, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like toilet paper was sold <laughs> out, man. I got, I actually got lucky on that one. Oh, I walked man. into CVS and they had this like stack. It was like, it was like they tried to build a sand castle out of stuff stacks of toilet paper man and, like i went in there are and, you and they were it's like, like they're eating tacos every night man i'm telling you I, i'm telling you they were they were and they were on sale it was all the and, and it was the toilet paper that me and shauna normally buy so i was like i want like five packs of that like right there and like i had shauna come pick me up because i couldn't carry it all home <laughs> oh my god so i did I, and and it, that that uh-huh. five packs of toilet paper it lasted us out man like there you go it was it was awesome. But anyways, back to uh, what I was saying, like I posted this thing on Facebook about how experts say, you know, to wear a mask yeah. and, you know, and all this stuff. What, you know, and, and in my experience and I even said that it's of my own opinion, in my right. experience, you're doing nothing but breaking down your own immune system and making yourself more susceptible for other viruses slash bacterial infections when this is all over when the covid goes and and nobody's worried about covid anymore your immune system is going to be so bottomed out that you're gonna you're gonna be worried about if you're gonna catch the cold and die of of pneumonia or something like that you know what i'm saying like right so 
so you know and and that's just a common cold right so so i posted that and i'm not going to say who i got into an argument with uh but i got into a little bit of an argument in the comment section because huh, somebody go figure this sounds like everybody anytime somebody commented <laughs> in there oh it must be nice to know better than the experts so i said okay we'll go there all right let's go there let's that's, go there. yeah that's juicy it, the, these are the same experts telling you to wear a mask that are telling you to wash your hands with antibacterial soap that you buy from Walmart. I'm sorry, but if you if you can buy it from Walmart, it is not good for your body. <laughs> it's made with chemicals and all kinds of stuff that you're putting on your skin. If you want to you want to protect, you want to use antibacterial soap, I'll make you some. Yeah. You know what I'm saying with with water and and um i use uh yeah oh, so you make soaps called? too man Talk i do about yeah that a little i make, bit. I, make I make soap a and and you know like body butters and body scrubs and and different things like that uh, i made my wife uh about a year ago i made her a cardamom coffee scrub so it's made with himalayan pink salt um um <laughs> palm palm kernel oil um and then you you actually put coffee grinds and uh cardamom nutmeg and peppermint in in this all natural products i love natural. that I all organic all, and you're not just my, saying it's organic it is organic it is it, 100 i use 100 pure or gcms certified pure organic essential oils um to, for my for my sense and stuff like that uh, um so I'm a I'm a wellness advocate with DoTerra. So I use DoTerra products, but I also get oils from other companies that I know are also GCMS certified, pure, right. organic, therapeutic. I'm, I'm telling oils. you, man, so, and I've been telling you for a long time. Uh, you really like once COVID starts slowing down, and you're able to, you know, um, find yourself in an investment situation. I really think you would benefit from opening up your own shop. You know, a mom oh, yeah, and pop yeah. shop. Just yep, something absolutely. like that. You could do it in a mall. You could do it uh, in a strip mall, you know, yeah. somewhere where there's bustle and hustle and, yeah. you know, the overhead won't of... cost too much. Right. Yeah. I, I, I had, I had considered it um, already uh, opening up a little. And then you can somewhere. have a back room with a table and have some massages. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm telling well, you, I'm, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, I made her that coffee scrub. She really liked it. It, <laughs> it really made her skin nice and smooth and, and stuff like that. But, you know, everything's trial and error. So I, I, I used regular coffee grinds for that. And, um, you know, they kind of got caught up in the, in the drain, in the, in the bathroom, you know, in the bathtub and stuff like that. So we changed it. I changed it. And so used I, instant coffee grinds. A answer a question for me first. My mind's jumping to why the fuck would I wipe coffee on my face? Um, because Where, coffee, justify that for me, coffee grinds, uh, when you put that on your skin, coffee is a natural detox. It helps detox the body. It draws toxins through your skin out of the body. And when you wash it away with the water, the, the toxins okay. go with it. Okay. Um, I can, I can so, see that. I mean, so I guess uh, my other question then is, you know, I'd like to hear your thought on this because of the wellness and uh, how much of an organic guru that you are. So there's a lot of people that will tell you that coffee in excessive use, like three to four cups a day, you know, something like that's kind of what I drink a day. I'm big right. into coffee. So some people will make this righteous claim that too much coffee will eat your stomach away, yet it's a detox so what is that balance then how do you justify that okay so uh with anything anything sure. anything you drink anything you consume anything you do uh has to come with moderation right you know i mean you, ha you have to be <laughs> even smoking pot so right so you can't smoke pot all day it's not good for you that, that was that was premeditated i i can see that <laughs> <laughs> even, even with smoking pot you can't smoke sure. dope all day because you'll be a you'll be a uh you won't be a help really to anybody but you right. know you know smoke a bowl in the morning smoke a bowl in the evening to help you 
help you sleep or Six you know, calm the down or whatever. Morning. Yeah, that right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's 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 good. It's it's a good med, you know, it has great medicinal value. Sure. You know, and coffee's the same thing, you know, everything's good in moderation. So um, you know, one or two cups a day, great, you know, and then not not just the fact that it's a you know detoxifier for the body, right. but there is something in and I can't I don't know exactly what it is I, without looking at like uh, my notes and, and things like that on my computer, which I don't even have my headset on. So um, there is a, a chemical compound in coffee beans that helps with the anti-aging process. So like for skin health specifically. So as you drink coffee or apply grinds to your skin with a salt scrub, like I was talking about, um, not only are you drawing toxins out of your body, but it is also um, applying that chemical compound to your skin to, to, to rid yourself of wrinkles or even like liver spots for, for, for elder, you know, elderly women. Right. Um, you know, those kinds of things, it will, coffee is, is, is just one of those things, you know, there's certain drinks, certain juices and things you can drink, um, on, on, a, on a daily basis. And coffee is one of those that helps with, with anti-aging. Um, another good one is orange juice or lemon juice or, uh, apple cider vinegar or, um, aloe vera juice is really super good for, for anti-aging. So, um, there's so many good ones out there. Grapefruit juice, even, um, really good for, for the whole anti-aging, uh, to make your skin for, for better skin health. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know, I mean, you think about it, the skin, what do they say? The skin is like the third lung, you know, of the body. So it's, I, I was reading, um, I've got an article pulled up and I was kind of scaling it a little bit. And some of the things that I guess that coffee has the potential to work with is cardiovascular, um, disease, as well as, um, folks that are, you know, elderly and senior, like, um, those are just a couple of things I was trying to look yeah. up that, that chemical that you were talking about, but I couldn't. Yeah. Find the it. chemical compound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. I, yeah. I can, I I'm willing to try. Um, well, shoot. This was fun, man. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you, you asked me a question a while, well, I don't know, 20 minutes ago or whatever. And I don't think I ever got around to, to, uh, to answering the question. Yeah. And basically the question was like, you know, as a blind person, how do I, you know, how do I, you know, get past the whole, um, you know, part of, of, you know, somebody who has gone blind or, or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I just wanted to touch a little bit to, on that yeah. depending on how yeah. much we digress with this, but, you know, to people, um, you know, I, I get it personally, you and right. I understand this concept, but you know, to folks who are sighted and who've never walked in a shoe of a blind person's life, like you and I have for many years, you know, to them, they're thinking, well, how the fuck do you make moonshine? You know, like, how would mm. you explain that with your yeah. adaptations and well, um, methods? I'm a cook. I like to cook. Amen. Um, you know, and it, it really, like, I, I, you know, we have a mutual friend and, and like, I'm, like I said, I'm not, I'm not like going all in and throwing out names and, and, and stuff, but this guy, like, he's a freaking super awesome dude, uh, but he doesn't even know how to use his stove or, or his oven in, in his place. And, and like, that bothers me as, as not just as a human being, but, yeah. as, you know, as a person that has <laughs> um, had some, you know, some tough life styles changes and things, you know, going blind when I was in my teens and, and whatnot. And for me, like, okay, you know, like I, you know, I turned to drugs and alcohol uh, when I was there. a teenager, yeah, I've been you know there. what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I, I don't want that for other people. You know what I'm saying? Like I've met people throughout my life that have lost their sight later in life and they don't know how to do things because yeah. like they, they figure, Oh, I can't see now. So how am I supposed to continue? I got a buddy down in South Carolina who, you know, up until the last couple of years, like he couldn't do stuff. He, yeah. he, uh, he lost his sight in his forties due to a work accident. 
and neither the wife for, does for, everything yeah, or for, for you the know first two years like he the, his wife almost did everything for him even to the point of like you know he would give his wife his phone and she would write up a text to send it to somebody when he should be able to do that himself right privacy you know you know advocacy independence right independence and that's that's like my you know i want to start a nonprofit. i want to i really do and, and it's because i have a passion and a compassion for people who have uh lost their sight later in life or even people who are are born blind and and, and they're sheltered by their by their families and their parents and things like that and sheltered to the point where what are you going to do like i got a friend in wales um He's 30 something years old. He still lives at home with his folks. He does everything with his parents because they do everything for him. Right. He, he, he's only allowed to have a certain amount of time on, on the family computer on a daily basis. And, and it's only like two hours or something like that. Right. He gets two right. hours a day. And it's like, dude, you are 30 years old. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to stand up for yourself. Be like, Hey, look, like, I, I got to have a life. And like, you know, part of that is communicating with the outside world and getting out. And maybe some of that is, you know, talking to some friends on the computer or whatever on team right, talk or, right. or exposure. Or it, exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, socializing socialism, you know what I'm saying? Like t totally, you know, uh, getting out there and talking to people and, and being a part of society, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you are 30 years old. You need to, you need to put your foot down, you know, with your, with your folks. And, and he's like, no, they, they do everything for me. And, and, and I'm like, you almost sound like you welcome that. Like you don't right. want to do things for yourself. And it's, he does, he does. He welcomes it. He doesn't want to do things for himself because he's been raised that way. Right. Let's he's digress. Let's digress. I, I like, I think, or unpack this, I think, uh, you know, yeah from you you and I share the, the exact same perspective on this and you know as somebody who's a who's in this community as a teacher and as an instructor I I've walked with different um different paths ranging from right. you know total independence to you know the situation with your you with your friend in the UK and um I I can't we you know we can't sit here and blame them for feeling this way, you know, because as you, you said, it's, oh, a, no, yeah, it's, they were raised, as you yeah. said, they were raised with this perspective and not being exposed to independence, not being, you know, given a chance to thrive and, and make mistakes. You know, there's such right. a taboo against watching a blind person not find the door for five minutes and then suddenly oh i'm the asshole because i didn't go and help them no it's okay it's okay yeah. you're doing the right thing by allowing them to make mistakes because you know the way of the marine corps adapt and overcome you figure right. it out and it's gonna right. be uh so we'll get into a, this uh kind of segue a little bit so i told you like a week ago or so about this argument I got into on Facebook, right? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll also keep this individual nameless, but um, it, it came to a degree of, I basically said on Facebook that, you know, if a blind person, or I think in general, I'm not even going to attach the word blind. If somebody drops, let's say, I don't know, a dollar, okay? And somebody says, hey, can I grab that for you? And I say no. You know, that means I don't I, I, I appreciate and, and acknowledge your offer as a graceful intention. But if I right. said no, then it then it becomes invasive if you do it. And that's something right. we see. That's something we see excessively in the disabled communities is this persuasion of, you know, I don't believe you. My perspective is better than yours, which is not the intention. Right. I understand that. Right. Because people have a good nature in their hearts. But right. how do you justify, you know, uh, uh, suddenly I was like, what? I can't be a good person, you know, because that's what happens. It, they right. feel threatened. There's a right. threat. Um, uh, and it, and it's so hard. And I, I had to explain, you know, and I, you could chime into this cause we, you, you had brought this up. Um, 
you know, if we're out in public with our canes and we're at the store, you know, we know the store pretty well after doing some orientation and mobility throughout right. it, you know, and we have, you know, so-and-so and their kid over in the next aisle and they come out and they say, Hey, what's that stick in your hands? Sure. It sounds a little bit weird at first, but a lot of the time what happens is the parental side, you know, the parent will shush them and say, Oh, that's rude. No, Dude. it's not. I, I have to say this because like it that that's that happened to me. So I right across the street from where I train martial arts, there's a dollar general. So like after class, like I was all sweaty, you know, after class or whatever, I, you know, I, I had changed out of my uniform. I carry a backpack with me and just put yeah. my uniform in my backpack yeah. or whatever. But there's this lady and her son. Um, They were sitting in the car and this kid, I don't know, he he was probably six or seven years old. Um, and you know, probably was never, he probably never seen a blind person before except for what's on TV. Yeah. So like I walked across the street with my cane, you know, and, and went into dollar general and got some things and put them in my backpack to carry home and whatnot. And I came out and I started walking down the street. And, or, you know, down a sidewalk, and this little boy yells out the window, Hey, hey, what you using that stick for? <laughs> <laughs> and I was, so I, I, I stopped and turned around and I walked back towards the vehicle, towards the sound of the, the, the little boy's voice, you know, and his mom's in the car, like, Hey, hey, shut up, don't leave that man alone, you know, whatever. And he's like, No, I want to know what he's using that stick for. And, and so I got over to the car and I was like, What, what do you ask me? And he was like, hey, man, what what you using that stick for? And I said, well, I can't see um, with my eyes. So I use the stick, as you call it, um, to uh, to kind of see where I'm going to make sure I don't run into stuff and, you know, to find steps and, you know, make sure I'm stepping down or stepping up the step, you know, ac accordingly, you know. And uh, and he was like, oh. Well, how you train karate? Because I just seen you walk out of that karate place. How you train karate if you can't see? You use your stick? And I was like, no. And he said, and I quote, dude, then use like daredevil and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way, dude. I was like, uh, no, Daredevil is a boxer. I train in martial arts. Exactly. A little bit different. You know, exactly. a little bit Exactly. <laughs> uh, so. But you so, still, you made that kid's day. Absolutely. I, he, he was all smiles after that. His mom was like, hey, uh, sorry, he's very vocal. And I was like, no, it's okay. You know, kids, they're curious. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and if you don't answer their questions, you know what I'm saying? You it leaves are, them room to assume you're enabling you, that. You, right. And but you are their source of information. Like kids are just so they're like sponges. You know what I'm saying? They want to yeah. absorb everything. They're so curious. They want to know. I'm like my nephew, uh, he was he was only like four years old when he did this. And he come over and he sit on the couch. I was sitting at my mom's house, and he come over and he was like, Uncle Man, can can I touch your eye? And I was like, are your hands clean? And he was like, uh, and I was like, if you got to think about it, then you need to go wash. You your better hands. go wash your hands, boy. So he, <laughs> ran, he jumped down and ran into the bathroom and washed his hands. Then comes his, his sisters around the corner. What's he washing his hands for? He wants to touch my eye. Oh, I want to, I want to wash my hands. So they all ran in the bathroom, washing their hands, Jeez. pushing each other out of the way and all this stuff. And, Right. So then they all climb on me in the living room. I'm still sitting on the couch. I'm just laughing. And um, my wife's sitting on the other end of the couch and my my nephew climbs up next to me. My the older sister, she kind of sits like kind of perched on the, the, the arm of the couch. And then the baby, she was only two at the time. So she's like kind of like standing in front of me, like just all big eyed and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And my nephew says. Okay, I wash my hands, Uncle Ben. Can I touch your eye now? And I was like, okay, but you have to only touch this eye because at the time I had an infection in my other eye. So I was like, yeah. you can't touch this eye because it is sick right now. And he was like, okay. So he reached out and he puts his finger on my glass eye, you know? And he's just like, wow, you know, really cool. And then like the other ones, they wanted to touch it too. 
And then like Shauna on the other, the other side of the couch. Now note their ages. She says, <clears throat> Ben, have you ever taken your eye out for the children? Um, no, I don't want to give them nightmares. Yeah, that'll and traumatize I, the kids. <laughs> my, my nephew, he says, what? You could take it out? And what? I was like, what? Yes. And he was like, Uncle Ben, you got to let me, you got to let me see that. I, I, you you got to take it out. And I was like, I was like, he is such a boy. <laughs> yeah, so dude. Curious, you know? Yeah, so I took dude. it out and he was like, Wow. He's like, can I hold it? And I was like, yeah, just don't drop it. Right. And don't don't drop it. it. Right. So I take it out and I hand it to him. You know, I cleaned it off on my shirt or whatever. And I, I hand it to him. And he was like, wow. You know, and the other the girls are all like, you know, pushing in like they want to see. They want to see, you know. So he, he passing around my glass eye to all the kids. Right. And it gets to my to the baby. And she's just like, no, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to hold it. I don't. I just want to look at it. You can just hold it. And I'm, I'm just like laughing. And my nephew, he reached up, and with his little fingers, he opened up my eyelids of my empty eye socket, and like tilted my head towards him so that he can look inside. And he was like, Uncle Ben. It's all bloody in there. <laughs> oh. And it's really not. It's right. Just, it's just the know, muscles, you know, blood it's vessels. The muscles. Right, right, yeah, right. And the right. blood vessels and stuff. And he was just like, but he was absolutely fascinated with the whole, with everything. Like he wanted to look, he was all up in my face, looking into my skull and stuff. And I'm like, okay buddy uh you know and he was like wait wait a minute i'm just looking just wait a minute like i just want to see i just want to look at what is that you know and he's just looking <laughs> he's just looking in there and he's just like and he's like pulling my eyelid up at different angles with his thumb and stuff like that and he's just looking in there and he i'm like i looked at my sister and i was like he's gonna be a doctor yeah like, exactly seriously. that's an eye doctor like Wade in the that is absolutely dude. how like, old is he and, now he is six and yeah, he's in first grade, I think. Yeah, I think okay. he's in first grade. Yeah, dude, you um, totally so say. curious. Yes, yeah, so curious. Yeah. It's just little sponges, man. And so that's why I'm saying, like, if somebody asks you that question, you know, what is that stick for? What do you use that for? Then absolutely, especially if it's a child, I will tell them. Yeah. Um, with 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 no, you know, no qualms on like, you know, worries about Oh, you know, they're offending me. No. And, and I explained to the, to, to their parents, look, th that is not offensive. So, you know, they are just have, curious. Have you ever seen space jam? You remember seeing that movie? Oh yeah, absolutely. The ne yeah, your like, nieces uh, and nephews kind of remind me of the monsters gathering around the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's it. Exactly. Oh man. Um, oh, on that note, why don't movie. we, why don't we bring it to a close here? This has been okay fucking awesome um really yeah, quick just to recap um Sh sort of dreams by alexander bentley on amazon and uh the audio book will be put in the description uh, along with a paypal address in case you would like to donate to help out um but any anything you wanted to um say before i end the recording uh no just like you know i mean for for people out there who have you know, gone through situations, whether it's, whether it's losing your eyesight or losing your hearing or, you know, really, I, I have a passion for blind people because I'm blind, right. you know, uh, actually, no, I take that back. I'm not blind. I just can't see. You just and can't that's, see. That's right. That's right. I, that's, that's, right. that's the way I see it. No pun intended. And, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, if what, whether it doesn't matter if you, if you're in a wheelchair or whatever, my, my passion is for the disabled. Um, Amen. and, and, and if you're going or the handy capable man, handy, right. Yeah. Handy capable. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so yeah, if you have, uh, have something that you're dealing with, uh, you know, through that you need help with the transition, uh, I am more than happy to do that for you. Um, no matter the, no matter what the problem is. Right? Awesome. All right. We'll do this again. Fucking it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Sounds Bye. like a plan. Bye now. Yeah.